let's talk about the data engineering platform architectures. So all that requirement that I talked uh, here, uh, for example, this uh, systems are producing data, people are there to consume and take decisions based on that. And then data engineers are in between to facilitate that. All that is not new. It's not like that. It is something recently started happening. Uh, it's not like that, that data engineering didn't existed earlier. And now in recent few years, data engineering has started becoming popular or a new idea or a completely new concept. No, it's not there. This requirement or this flow existed since the business existed, right? Since we started using computers for businesses, for business operations or for doing business uh, uh, optimization and for doing uh, for growing business it existed since then so maybe in 90s or 80s all those days all data engineering existed maybe we were not calling it data engineering that time recently a new term has uh, become more popular where we call it data engineering so how we did it in the past so if you go back in the history maybe 90s or early 2000 the we we use data warehouse architectures to build these kind of systems and data engineering of the modern days is evolution of the data warehousing. So maybe if uh, you're not familiar with what data warehousing was, we will talk about it uh, when I start talking about the architecture. But this, this uh, diagram is to help you understand how it evolved. So it, initial structure, initial architecture was like data warehousing architecture, where we consumed, we applied all three functions. We consumed data. Uh, we ingested data, we did data processing, data transformation, data quality check, and then we also facilitated data consumption. All that was done using data warehousing architecture. But over a period of time, maybe in 2007, 8, or maybe 2010, around a uh, new architecture came up, which we call data lake architecture, which is uh, quite popular even now that data lake architecture uh, is popular and being used by different projects. But data warehouse why data lake architecture came? Because data warehouse had some uh, challenges, some limitations. I won't say challenge, I'll say some limitations. So to overcome those limitations, we uh, industry came up with a new architecture called data lake architecture. But in the data lake architecture also, we had some limitations. To overcome the, those limitations, different approaches were suggested. One approach is known as Lambda architecture, which uh, tries to handle some limitations of the data lake architecture. Then there is another architecture, uh, suppose, uh, um, talked about is Kappa architecture, which also tries to overcome some limitations of data lake architecture, which they say that uh, Lambda architecture is not able to handle it efficiently. So Kappa architecture came. So all that evolution happened, but now the most recent uh, architecture development is lake house medallion architecture. So that's that's about the evolution of the different kind of data architectures. So we will we will slowly understand these architectures. Uh, and differences and their limitations. Uh, I will not go into the details of these architectures right now. Uh, but for you, uh, you should understand that it started with the data warehouse architecture and evolved uh, over a period of time to cover uh, different kind of requirements and to overcome limitations in the previous architectures. And the most recent one is lake house medallion architecture. And that's what we will uh, mostly focus on during the entire course, how, what this architecture is and how we build applications uh, following this lake house medallion architecture for developing designing developing the modern uh, uh, data engineering applications mm -hmm.